Hello everyone, Rochelle here and I'm back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. All right, so today I'm going to be doing a blocking video and I am going to be doing a matching cowl that goes with this hat. So you all have, uh, may have already seen this hat in a previous video that I did um, talking about this hat. I will leave the link to that hat probably at the end of the video in one of the end cards. Um, but you can just check my channel if you want to check it out. I go more into detail about this wonderful hat. So I was working on the cow. It was a whip. Now it's a finished object. And so it matches this hat and the pattern is called the top, the top stitch toque and cow. I can't think I got that right. Um, but it is by Evolve Crochet. Uh, she's Evolve Crochet on Instagram as well. So, um, to make the two projects, I use a five millimeter hook. I do believe that is an H size hook that I use for both of the projects. So yeah, so, oh, and the yarn that I'm using is Vic Twist uh, Value, which is a Joann's brand yarn. And uh, it has 380 yards, six ounces. Even after making the cowl and the hat, I had this much left. So I don't know what I can do with this, but yeah, I'm sure I could figure out something to do with this amount of yarn that's left over. So I'm excited about that. All right, so I am going to be blocking this cowl in real time. I'm not gonna, you know, edit anything out while blocking the cowl, so it will be done in real time. So I encourage you to sit back, relax, and watch uh, me block this cowl. If you wanna crochet or knit or weave, or spin, whatever, or block your project, if you want to do that along with me, that would be fantastic. And after I finish blocking the cowl, I'll come back and then we'll talk a little bit more about the cowl. And the next day after the cowl has dried, I will show you all that as well um, at the end of the video. So let's get started. Thank you. 
So I hope that you all enjoyed that blocking video. I, I definitely enjoy blocking. It's a process that I really do enjoy. So I'm going to talk about the supplies that I use to block this cowl. The first thing that I use were the Knitter's Pride Knit Blockers. These are amazing. They're rust resistant uh, and they're stainless steel and they're so cool. And inside you get 12 of the big ones. I believe there's eight pins in each of these. And then you get um, eight of the smaller ones. So it's really nice. I really do enjoy it. And I actually have two boxes of these because I recommend that you get two boxes. I never can block a project with just one box. I always think, oh, you know, I've got one box. I'm gonna be fine. Nope, always takes two boxes. And I do believe they have some knit blockers that come in different colors as well. Um, of course, like I think they're called the rainbow knit blockers. And of course they came out after I had already bought these two. Um, but I will leave a link in the description box below if you wanna check those out. All right, so the next thing that I used was a spray bottle. And of course the color is purple, right? Like no big surprise there. And of course I love the purple box of the knit blockers. Yeah, it's a purple problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, so in here it's just plain water. Um, I know people have different ways of blocking their projects. Some people like to soak their projects first and then block it. Uh, some people steam block. There's many, many different ways to block your projects. I personally like to just uh, lay the, the project flat while it's dry and then spray, I uh, use spray water, spray water, <laughs> and then spray water onto the project and then pin it that way. Um, but yeah, nothing but water. So I really like having this bottle. And the next thing that I used was a tape measure. And using a tape measure is something that I have newly started doing. Um, but using a tape measure is great because it allows you to uh, block your project with the correct um, length and width measurement. So if your cow, in my instance, if your cow starts off at, you know, uh, 18 inches at the top, you want it to be 18 inches at the bottom because I'm trying to block it into a square, like a perfect square. So um, if I want it to be 16 inches all the way, then every few inches down the cowl, I will measure to make sure that the pins are set apart at the same length. So if I want to do 16 inches or if I want to do 18 inches, I simply go down the cowl and just make sure that those pins are at 18 inches all the way down the cow because that's the way that I want it to um, look when it's dry. So you can do the same thing. A person that does a much better job explaining how to do this than me is Brendan from Knitwits and Yarn. In fact, I will uh, leave a link to his um, video where he talks about blocking. He does an excellent job explaining the process of blocking. And in that video, he is actually blocking a sweater that he had um, knit in pieces. And so before he seamed it together, he blocked everything by itself. Like he blocked the back panel, the front panel, um, the two sleeves. It's really good. So if you want a good video on how to, um, how to block, then his video is amazing. Alrighty then, so what I would like to do now is I would like to show you all the finished, um, well, the rest of me blocking this cow. And I'm gonna go ahead and insert a clip just showing you all like day two and uh, yeah, how I finished up.
and talk about the finished measurements of this beautiful, beautiful cow. So the measurements turned out to be 18 inches by 16 and a half inches. So it is a very large cow, um, but you can wear it so many different ways. Of course, there's the traditional way like this, but I also like to wear my cowls kind of like over my head sometimes. <laughs> like this. That way your neck is protected and also your head. So I, I love to wear cowls like this. So I absolutely love this project. I would say the most challenging part of this project was the ribbing for sure. Um, during the first set of ribbing was no problem once I got the hang of it, but doing the second panel of ribbing, wow, <laughs> that was something else. But I got through it. I got through it. So yeah, it's cool. Um, I did have one little crease. That crease may have already been gone after I finished blocking it. Yeah. I think the crease has worked its way out. It just came from the cow being flat for so long because it was like flat overnight. But yeah, I mean, you can't even, can't even see it. So I'm really happy about that because I was wondering if it would flatten out, but it has. So it's amazing and yeah, love it, love it, love it. So I think that is all. Oh, I forgot to mention one of the supplies that I use. I used this mat this is just a gym mat that i had uh, left over um we had put a treadmill down and we didn't need all of the um the uh mats and so this is just one that i had left over i also use these mats uh when i go to fire fest sometimes the floors are hard and so i will use um these mats to stand on so yeah that's what I use. And like I said, I will leave a link to all of this stuff in the description box below. Um, I also wanted to say like, if you all hear like uh, bubbling, I guess, my humidifier is on and you all probably can't even hear it, but it's just me. Like I can hear it. I can hear the humidifier from here. <laughs> so you all may not have even like noticed it, but anyway, I just felt like I needed to say that. All right, so to end uh, the rest of this video or to end this video, I wanted to leave you all with a babadon question. And of course, that's just French for let's chat. So today's question, and I have it written down. Today's question is, in what non-yarn related way do you relax? Okay, I got my stuff over there. Um, yeah, so in what non-yarn related way do you relax? or is working with yarn your way of relaxing? So I have my stuff over here. Oh, I'm so old. <laughs> okay, so there are several things I like to do to relax. So if, um, and these are non-yarn things that I like to do to relax. If you have been following me uh, for a while, you will know that I'm definitely into gardening. I love gardening and I will be giving you all a greenhouse tour soon. I have quite a few things growing in the greenhouse. Got some carrots, potatoes, sweet potatoes, um, onions, uh, tomatoes. I probably said that already. <laughs> um, yeah. And there's something else. Squash, squash. Yes. I have squash growing in there as well. So that's exciting. But other non-yarn uh, related things or crafts or things that I like to do. In fact, it doesn't even have to be craft related. I'm talking completely non-yarn related things. I have quite a few. So the first one that I have is Sudoku. This is my Sudoku book. I love doing Sudoku. It's so relaxing to me. And yeah, this is a pretty worn book because I take it everywhere. Um, but I enjoy doing Sudoku. Love it. Another thing that I really enjoy doing is I love doing word search puzzles. And this particular word search puzzle is completely in French. So all the words are in French, which is definitely a challenge. And yeah, it's great. And whenever I don't know a word, I just look it up and write it down at the bottom. 
So I love doing word searches. Maybe you like to do word search or like to do crossword puzzles, but I love them. Uh, other things that I enjoy doing are adult coloring. I love doing adult coloring books. I know that was a bit crazy at one time, but I find that doing adult coloring or just coloring in general, I find it to be very, very relaxing. And it just kind of takes your mind away from everything. And this is a newer one that I got from Joann's and this one is color by number. So yeah, this coloring book wasn't, uh, it's a, it's an adult coloring book, but it doesn't have numbers in it. But this one, I got it from Joann's. Um, it has numbers in it and I have really been enjoying this. It's been a lot of fun to work on. And these are just great things to do when, you know, maybe you're just not in the mood to knit or crochet or weave or spin or whatever it is at that particular moment, but you want to do something to stimulate your brain and keep your hands moving. And so I think that puzzles and things like this and coloring is amazing. And this last thing that I have, um, my friend Delilah of uh, Delightfully Stitched, um, she suggested this to me. She has a YouTube channel. You should totally check her out. Um, but she told me about paint by sticker. Have you all ever heard of that? I had not heard of paint by sticker. So I bought this book based off of her recommendation. And um, I haven't had a chance yet to do any of the pictures, but it is so cool. So you get these like diagrams and then in the book, it has like sticker sheets. How cool is that, right? So yeah, it's really neat. So I love doing all those things. Also, I enjoy reading. There's nothing like making yourself some tea. Uh, for me, I enjoy oolong tea, uh, chai latte, whatever. Um, just grabbing some tea and a puzzle or a coloring book and just relaxing. It is just the best thing ever. I put a little bit of lo-fi music on and it's a good time. That is definitely how I unwind. So that is my question for you all is what is your non yarn related or non craft related thing that you enjoy doing? And if yarn is your thing, let me know. Maybe yarn is your thing. That is what you do to relax. Either way, let me know in the description box below. So thank you all so much for watching and uh, until next time, Bye. Mm -hmm.